So she has to go to hostel. So on 11 January, she uh, she donated her hair to cancer patient. Then Ahimsa came and she got a certificate. That's how I came to know about Hair Home for India. Then I started I started to search about it at Instagram. I'm following you, and then I every time you know I'm following the this Hair Home for India. And every time I see some interesting stories, powerful testimonies, people donating hair. And for me, I also want to donate my hair, but I have a thick hair. And if I keep long, I used to have a terrible headache. I cannot keep my hair long. So I told my daughter, okay, on the day you donate, you cut your hair, you donate your hair, I will go bold, I will shave my hair, I say. And I was so ready. I was so ready. But I was very, very ready, okay? But I just got the opinion, me being a leader sometimes, as, as the blue auntie sometimes, so <laughs> people started calling you like that. So I just tried to get the opinion of my church members, some friends, and all of them said, don't go, Paul, don't go, Paul, you're a leader, people will say something. We still have that stigma, you know, yeah. But I still, I'm still telling you, no, one day, very, very, one day, very definitely I'm going to share my hair. I just wanted to show the cancer patient that I care. I care. I'm here for you. And as somebody has said, we are all in this together. We are all in this together. Every day, my prayers are with you. I mention all, I, I may not know your name, but I always say people who are going through chemo or radiation, I just pray that God give them the strength, the survivor give them the strength. So today I want to salute with my two hands to, to the survivor. You are very bold, courageous. And of course, there are still many people who are uh, having a narrow mind, you know, they, they don't want to come out and say that I have a cancer, you know. So you are the people who should uh, share your powerful testimony to them and help them to come out of it, take a good treatment and be healed. Not have cancer, they may have the mutation, not have cancer. Sometimes we test, but that, that depends. Every, uh, every lady is different, so we, depending on the situation and the condition, we test it. But this is, of course, one major factor that can also lead for her to have uh, uh, this thing. So if you have first degree, like your mother or your sister who has breast cancer, there is more chance of you getting uh, breast cancer than a person who doesn't have a family history. So these are the risk factors. And um, when you look at it, yeah, that, that's all. I think I've covered the diagnosis part the staging part, the treatment part. And if you look at the survival, uh, survival-wise, the earlier the stage, the longer is your survival. That's what I always say. That's why, you know, uh, we stress on, you know, doing your screening. The screening uh, is, uh, in breast cancer is done by mammography. So any, uh, from 20 to 39 years, what, we, what the recommendation is, at least every three years, you should at least be seen by an oncologist or a clinician who will examine your breast. Okay, but you should also examine your breast from 20 to 39 years. Every three years, if a, a doctor can examine, that'll be better. And after, like once you turn 40, mammogram uh, every year. But that's the best way to pick it up at the early stage because the earlier you pick it, the earlier chances of survival. I mean, the longer your chance of survival. If it's stage one, we're expecting a survival of almost 90 percent. If it is stage two, it becomes 70 percent. If uh, 70 to 80. Stage three comes down, it becomes 50, and then stage four is quite less, 20 to 30. We don't have so much hope for a stage four. So the earlier you come to us, the earlier it's picked up. Uh, the better chances of survival. Very, uh, because I always say the early ones always live longer, they do better. And we have, it's not like before, like 10, 15 years back, uh, there were not very limited options for cancer. Now it's uh, it's almost like 
it's like uh, you know if I every like every six months I'm just reading every six months for lung cancer things are changing for thyroid cancer things are changing for uterine cancer it's like new developments are happening uh, new molecules are being found new treatments are being found because they are expensive but they're finding out uh, once upon a time it was like stage four is you know, like uh, most we most we will expect that they will die immediately. They will not live. But we are seeing stage four cancers also living a very long time, uh, ten years and all. Which yeah, so sort of with with better with uh, better uh, treatment. So definitely, from as an oncologist point of view, of course, uh, the best thing I can advise is to screen, get screened. That is the best way because if you can pick pick it up at the earliest, that'll be better. If there is a family history of cancer. Definitely, I think you need to be that you have to talk to an oncologist uh, regarding that. And uh, in our hospital, most chemotherapy, radiation therapy usually is not an issue. Mostly it's free, you don't charge. And uh, even I was talking to surgeon, he said almost everything surgery is covered under uh, the package. So I think, yeah, we're also, I think even here, I think we have for our uh, uh, patients and for the people here in Dimapur, it's more convenient. If, uh, like, Offering them at free cost without any charge. But mammography, we don't have. You'd have to go down. There's a good for the diagnostics if you want to get screened. So, uh, I just this one, I just leave you with this. We just want to create a space for cancer patients to come here, share their pain, share their anguish, share their. You know, we go through so much. What uh, the survivor has expressed is exactly what we go through. See, we have self-pity, sometimes we have that anger, we just have that denial. But in spite of all this negativity, we allow them to come here, we cry together. As Madam was sharing, as she was sharing, you know, I was just relieving the same story that I went through. So this is what happens to everyone. So this is a very safe space. Nothing leaks out from here, nothing goes from out from here. It's always a positive place. One of our pastors from WSB came prayed for this office when it was inaugurated. And he mentioned that this place is bedside. A space where the angels, uh, you know, uh, steer the, the pond, the water, people got healed. So this is a place where you can, you know, physically come and, uh, you know, get healed emotionally spiritually and we have created a space at times we invite doctors for free consultation we don't take money till now uh, we do not we have not uh, taken like uh, gone for a donation drive or things like that whatever well wishes give us we accept prayerfully and this is how we operate this uh, beyond cancer so this is a safe space for everyone that's one thing the second thing is after cancer treatment, people think, oh, I'm healed, I'm okay. And they go back to their normal life. But it's no. They have to, you know, constantly be reminded how to take care of their health, their diet, their lifestyles should be completely changed. Otherwise, it reoccurs sometimes. And when we are so uh, laid back, and think that we are normal, sometimes it comes back. Of course, in some areas where people have triple negative uh, tastes, and I don't know about all those, uh, those things, uh, medical terms and things like that, but sometimes it reoccurs. But in most of the cases, when people are laid back, when people just think that they are okay, then when people don't take care of their health, cancer comes back sometimes. So we want to, like we give a space for them to come so that they will be reminded, they will be motivated, they will be encouraged to take care of their health. And also, when our emotional health is not strong, when we are not positive, treatment doesn't work much. See, acceptance is very important for a patient. So time and again we call the patients, over the phone sometimes, sometimes we visit the patients and tell them that you should have that strong determination that you'll be healed. And that you should accept that cancer has happened to me, but it's okay, I'm going to fight. Unless and until a person comes into a point where, you know, the person decides that, you know, okay, I have got cancer, but with proper treatment and believe in God, I can do it. 
treatment takes a lot of time. But when a person is positive, with that positive attitude and belief in God, and when a person is very careful about what he eats or what she eats, then the treatment responds very well, quicker. So that is one thing uh, we try to disseminate the information to the cancer patients. And one thing again, the caregivers, they get so burnt out. I tell you, it's very difficult to be a cancer caregiver, really. It's very challenging. So we have a space for the caregivers also to come. And sometimes when I visit the cancer patients at the hospital or at home, I tell the patients to thank the caregivers. Because, you know, they are journeying together with the cancer patients, emotionally, spiritually. And, you know, it takes a lot of time to take care of a cancer patient. Feeding them, preparing for the uh, treatment, taking them around. You know, it takes a lot to me. It's like, you know, you just remove a lump. So I had a lump in my breast. I went, got it removed, and biopsy report came, malignant carcinoma breast. I'm like, blank, what is that? So I know, you know, there's something wrong. I know what carcinoma means, but I did not receive it. You know, I could not believe it. So what I did, I went on the internet, and I searched, and it said cancer. I'm like, me? You know, I know it happens to people. I've heard people got cancer, then uncle got cancer, then auntie got cancer. No. But in my family, me, it was like a very big shocker. And I just could not swallow it. I could not receive it. During that time, um, I'm so grateful for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reminded me that I have already experienced God's supernatural miracle in my life. I was married for six years, no children. No children, struggling, and God blessed me with not one, but two miracle sons. Two miracle sons, one after the other. Within a year, I had two boys. That was amazing. If you know my story, there is another story. I will testify another time. You know, God blessed me. And like, you know, I remember that, and I remember all the teachings, all, um, it's very strong, my faith, and like, you know, I just remember all that, what God is to me, who He is to me, and I said, I will not receive cancer. That lump that was there has already been removed and thrown away. No more in my body. Not, so cancer is not mine. The Bible says that death and life are in power of the tongue. So I did not confess life, I mean, sorry, I did not confess death over my tongue. I didn't say I have cancer. Uh uh, no. I don't have cancer. The cancer is gone. I have life. And so with that, I started my treatment process and I started with praise, praise giving, thanksgiving, you know, and I just said, Lord, let me be, you know, um, a testimony of how good you are. And so God gave me that testimony. So I said, Lord, now I'm saying, Lord, you know, <laughs> too much testimony, but I'm just joking. Say. So Lord, um, he showed me how to go about that praise, you know, and so um, I started my treatment process, it's horrible. You know those of you who have gone through cancer, you know the side effects of chemo. So we ha I had my operation, I did chemotherapy, I did radiotherapy, and I started taking medication. You know how horrible it is. It is agony. It is, it is one of the worst things that you can go through, you know. The side effects are terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, your body swells up, you're in pain all over. You know, um, your eyesight goes dim, your mind is foggy, your gums hurt. Part of your body that you did not know exists starts hurting. You know, I didn't know that I could feel my spleen hurting. It hurts. You know, I didn't know that um, the inside of my ear would hurt. It hurts, okay. Things happen my, because of uh, low immunity, because of, you know, um, all the medications I was taking, I started getting attacked by all infections and diseases, my skin rashes and all that. It was terrible. And one of the worst things that could happen was depression. Depression hit me. I had so many friends, so many families that were praying for me. And yes, I was standing in faith. I was praising God. But, you know, at 
night or in the evenings when all my children, my children are playing all the time, my family is busy, I'm lying down in bed alone in pain and I'm crying out. And I say to you, it is okay to cry. Cry. You can take out all your frustration and anger and scream and cry. Do that. Once you're done, wipe off your tears, straighten your head and walk straight. When I was battling, um, you know, um, I would say my healing process, now, the depression really hit me very strong because I am a woman of faith. I consider myself a woman of faith. I am, you know, um, I have a good standing in my church. I am um, discipling boys and girls and me myself here. I am, you know, feeling depressed. But one thing I'm telling you, you're not alone. In this journey, you're not alone. Whatever your circumstances may not be cancer, but whatever your circumstances are, you are not alone. There are men and women who have gone before you who have done this. You have experienced this very same thing that you have gone through. And that was one positive thing for me. I uh, knew some people that had gone through, some women who had gone through this. And so I connected with them, spoke with them, I shared with them. And you know, my friend circle grew and um, they led me, they taught me, we shared information, we cried, and you know, the healing process took place like that. So my body was healing, yes, but my mind was stagnant, it was healing, not healing, it was going back. Now, but with this connecting of friends, connecting, praising, praying, and you know, just sharing, there are things that they could, you know, um, talk with me about that other people could not talk with me because they have gone through their experience. Now, so like that, I was able to heal my mind also. And in that way, Beyond Cancer was formed. Officially, Beyond Cancer came about in the year 2018, when as a group, 2017, sorry, as a group, we uh, visited hospitals, patients, we visited their homes, we visited um, you know, organizations, and we testified, we shared, we invited doctors to speak, we gave information, we sat together, we cried together, we prayed together, we did all that. And that is how our organization, Beyond Cancer, this small little initiative, started and grew. Nagaland TV, Sop Manulaga Awas. Watch us live on Geo TV and on your television sets as well. For Dumapu viewers, we are on channel number 994 in Global Chapter. And Kohima and Mokokchong viewers, switch to channel number 138 on Hornbill Digital. For all news and updates, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter.